up tonight and grateful to the Lord that he has chosen to send one of his choice vessels to minister to us tonight, a seasoned vessel, well informed and well influenced by the word of God. I want you to clap your hands as he makes his way to the stage. He is the right reverend, Pastor John Hanna. The right reverend. Did you hear that title? The Right Reverend. Let's get something straight. This was not a revelation, okay? This is strictly an invitation. I literally called him, and I don't, I don't bother Bishop a lot. I text him. I says, I can't explain it, but the Lord told me that I just need to sit in your presence for a few minutes. That's all I know I'm supposed to do. It's, it's something I need to get in your presence for. And I say, either I will fly you here or I'll fly there. But I have to get in your presence. And he said, well, it'll be easier if you come to me. I said, I'm on my way. And everything that I needed, everything that I questioned was poured at the table. And so since you poured, how dare I resist to pour? So everyone under the sound of my voice, if you be in the building or you be online, God's about to water you tonight. There's something that's been brewing on the inside that I decree and I declare that you're going to see increase this year. Now, I love, I love standing on the side. I love what worship is going on because I watch some of you all while worship is going on. And some of y'all are just chilling. And I need you to hear me. No one can worship God for you. No one can praise God for you. When he healed the ten lepers, one came back. He says, where are the other nine? And I don't know about you, but I don't want him to have to look for me to give him glory. When you don't open your mouth, you got to hear me now. When you don't open your mouth, it is a slap in his face because after everything that he's done for you, all he wants is your sound. It is his breath in your lungs to release your sound. So wherever you are, do me a favor. Lift your hands and release your sound. We glorify you, we lift you, we magnify you. You are God, you are great, you are excellent, you are holy, you are magnificent, you are sovereign, you sit on the throne. You are a good God, a great God, a mighty God, a merciful God, a loving God, a kind God. And what do we do? We give you glory. Come on, release your sound. Your sound represents your testimony. Your sound represents your journey. Your sound represents your house. Your sound represents your ministry. Your sound represents your business. Open your mouth and release your sound. Come on, let's prop a sound. You wait till you see. Tell three people tonight is my night. I need you to say it like you believe it. I need you to say it like something's about to shift. I need you to say it like God waited just for you to get to tonight. I need you to say it like you're about to catch up to what he's already established. I need you to say it like you're in the move of God. Tonight, 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 tonight. On March the 1st, God's about to change my life. On March the 1st, what he didn't do in 10 years, he's about to do in one night. What he didn't do in 10 years, he can do it in. Yay! Glory to God. Come on, on your way to your seat. Tell somebody tonight, tonight.
Tonight. Tonight. Tonight. I'm so glad you kept pushing. Mm. For somebody, I'm so glad you didn't end your life. Because you made it to your divine date. So I want you to know that I honor you. I really do. I really do. I call you the bishop of the world. I told her, he said, there's no such thing. I said, well, you need to look in the mirror. You are the bishop of the world. Jesus. You are... We are, you make us proud. I mean, we all stick our chests out like, that's our bishop. The Catholics got the Pope, we got you. <laughs> you are our bishop. And you make us proud. Every time you mount the podium, every time you go around the world, you make us us proud. Let's give God a hand praise for our bishop. <laughs> to your wife, your children, we celebrate you as a whole. We celebrate you as a whole. So if you have your Bibles, I want you to go to 1 King 19, very familiar passage of scripture, very familiar passage of scripture, and it kind of ties into what I came here or what I flew here for. Um, and it reads, and if you don't mind, I'm going to read out of the NIV, 1 Kings 19. I'm going to start at the 19th verse. So Elijah went from there and found Elisha. Just nudge your neighbor and say, you're about to be found this year. <laughs> the son of Shaphat. What was he doing? He was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen. And he himself, he himself... He himself was even in the field, was driving the twelfth pair. Elijah went up to him and threw his cloak around him. Elisha then left his oxen and ran after Bishop Jakes. I mean, Elijah. <laughs> Let me kiss my father and mother goodbye, he said, and then I will come with you. Go back, Elisha rep Elijah replied. What have I done to you? So Elisha left him, went back, took his yoke of oxen, and slaughtered them. What does that mean? You got to close this chapter in order for you to get to your next. You got to make sure that you have nothing to run back to. He didn't just slaughter them. He burned the plowing equipment to cook the meat and gave it to the people, and they ate. And then... He began his new chapter, his next. Then he set out to follow Elijah and became his servant. For those of y'all that are watching online, I want you to type it on the screen. Those of y'all in the building, I want you to turn into someone. I can't die here. You can be seated. I can't die here. So I am from Chicago. I call it the holy city. You can be seated. How many of y'all are in the building from Chicago? Raise your hand. I'll give you time to go home and pack your bags and meet me back here so you can make it back to the holy city, okay? So I'm from Chicago, and I am from Chicago's housing authority. I am a product of poverty. I'm the product of two teenagers that had sex, and my mother, my mother conceived me. Ready? My father was a drug dealer, a gangbanger, and ended up going to prison. I am the product of poverty. I'm the first one to go to college, and I ended up at an HBCU. <laughs> at Alabama State University. <laughs> I got an AS, AS. Shut up. Listen. <laughs> so I graduated with a degree in criminal justice and went back to Chicago and I got a job working for the county. The county is a good job. If you get a job at the county, they give you good benefits. 
and it's a good starting salary. If you get a job at the county, you don't quit the county. We die in the county. You can mess up and it take them a while to fire you at the county because the wells run deep. And there are people that are in there that are on an oxygen machine but won't leave the county. Watch me, but while I was there, I kept feeling that there has to be more than just this. I kept feeling that God had promised me more than a job at the county. And for some of you all, you have settled what was supposed to be a drive-by. And God has sent me to shake you out of your comfort zone. Because what you believed him for shall be your reality. Come on here. Come on here. I need you to make sure you sit around somebody who believe that God has something greater in store for them. Can I touch your name and say, there has to be more than just this. So even while I was working at the county, I was serving in church. I served at the St. James Church of God in Christ. I was under the late elder Willie James Campbell. As a matter of fact, the first time I met Bishop was in my 20s serving Elder Campbell as his armor bear. He was preaching for you, but I stood on the side and never opened my mouth. You even took him out to dinner and I sat at the table and never opened my mouth because it wasn't my turn. God is only exposing you to your future. And it's important that you hold your peace because it's not for you to speak up, it's for you to be found. I was... So even while I was serving him, I was serving him and going to the county, serving him, going to the county, serving him, going to the county, staying up sometimes late from serving him, going to work and crawling up under my desk sometimes and going to sleep at the county. Because you could take a nap at the county. Ain't nobody going to say that to me. Is there anybody that ever went to sleep at work? If you work here, don't raise your hand. Listen, listen. So I'm running back and forth, but then something keeps boiling, saying there's more for you. There's more for you. There's more for you. And there's some of you all that are looking at me online and in the building. God sent me to tell you, he put that thing in you. There's more for you. Eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard what he's about to do in your life. Look at me. You're the curse breaker. You're going to be the first one in your family to do it. You're going to set the mark so high. Those of you that really believe that God has more for you, can I tell you what he told me this year going to be? This is going to be your record-breaking year. Oh, my God, which means that he's about to blow your mind. Okay. I just got to calm down. I'm sorry. I had my coffee. I'm sorry. I need you to make sure you sit next to somebody who's excited about God. You're going to see it. You're going to touch it. You're going to experience it. You're going to see it. You're going to touch it. You're going to experience it. You're going to see it. You're going to see it with your... You're not dying anytime soon. You're not leaving any... T- so let's talk. So let's talk. So for some people, it's going to look like your life just changed suddenly. That's for people that don't know your process. See, you know my, you know my reaping season, but you don't know my sowing record. And I came to let some of y'all know your labor has not been in vain. Every job you've had, every interview you had, every relationship you had, every ministry that you serve, it's all about to work together for your good. We are a people of faith. Let me make sure I'm in the right building. Watch me. We don't wait until they come to give God glory. When we hear a word that is coming, we start praising God in advance. I don't know who I'm talking to, but you can sit there if you want to. But what if I told you your praise will activate it? What if I told you your praise would release it? I'm going to count to three and give you a chance to give God a praise. One, two, three. Go, go, go. It's getting ready to happen. Come on, y'all. We, come on, I need you to feel this thing. I need this thing to wake your dream back up. I need 
need this thing to wake your drive back up. Ready? Come on, make sure you're in the section. Tell somebody, say, let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Type that on the screen. Let's go, let's go. Let's get out of here. Let's get out of here. Let's get it, let's get it, let's get it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Your serving has not been in vain. Yeah, I'm doing. Say I'm there. Say I'm there, Saya. Come on, have a seat. Have a seat. So who's he coming for? So who's he coming for? What qualifies you? Have a seat. What qualifies you? Can you give me just a little bit more on the monitors? What qualifies you? What qualifies you? Like, what makes God come looking for you? Hmm. <laughs> it's not just your faith. You've been working. You've been doing some stuff. And sometimes your present don't match your future. Sometimes your assignment doesn't match your dream. And it'll make you feel like you wasting time. Oh, I came to get you today. I came to shake you until your eyelashes fall off. Oh, no, no. Let's, come on here. Well, in other words, you gotta, you, either you're working, you're serving. You got to be working or serving. What do you mean? The Bible says, so Elijah went there and found Elisha, son of Shabbat. What was he doing? He was plowing. He's working in a field with 12 yoke of oxen. And I want you to make sure he's not just on the side telling people what to do. He was plowing. He was on there sweating like everybody else. He was plowing with the 12 yoke of oxen and he himself was driving the 12th pair. In other words, you've been busy working with your hands, but while you're working, your present thing is working out something on the inside of you. It's building up your work ethics. It's teaching you how to deal with the heat. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing to me? It's teaching you how, to, how, how you gotta get up at a certain time, how you might have to work with some people that you don't like, how you might have to listen to some people that you even smarter of. You ask me how you gotta deal with attitudes, how you gotta deal with people who are not nice, but you can't leave your assignment. And some of y'all, I came to let you, I'm so glad you didn't quit. I'm so glad that you didn't leave because they weren't paying you enough. Can I tell you something? What they paying you doesn't even match your dream. And you're only working it to pay your bills. But it's not going to be like this always. Oh, God, I wish I could jump off this stage. So you're working, you're working, you're work ethic. You're working, you're working it. You're serving in ministry. You're serving in ministry. And for some of y'all, I'm so glad you're not on payroll. Come on here. Yeah. I'm so glad because, watch me, they couldn't pay you to do what you do. And what you do, you do for the glory of God. Come on here. Come on here. You're working. Watch me. Watch me. You got to hear me. Watch me. He doesn't call anyone that's doing nothing. He doesn't call anyone to just sit at home sleep. Can I tell you something? When he came to get Moses, what was Moses? How, what, was, what was the future leader of Israel? He in the back of a desert looking over some, some, some animals that don't even belong to him. Come on here. Where was Peter? Peter was on the boat. Can I tell you something? Literally frustrated because he had been fishing all night and had cast his net. And he had begun to clean. And some of y'all, you are frustrated because you're not getting getting what you've been looking for. Oh, but I'm so glad you didn't abandon your boat. Come on here. Where was Matthew? Matthew was inside a tax booth doing what he do. And what did Jesus do? Step right into his booth, which means that God's about to invade your space. Come on here. Where was David when he was called? Please listen. David was in the field. Can I tell you something? They called everybody off the field and left him outside. Can I thank God for everybody that didn't call you? 
Can I thank God for everybody that went ahead of you? What is it about God that he won't let you walk in with the group? He has to pretty, pretty much put you out here by yourself, make you work it by yourself so that you, when you come in, it would be no mistake that the oil is on your life. I wish... Everybody that got a job, everybody that's working on something, you might not be getting paid, you might like like it, you might be dealing with witches and warlocks, but can I can I get you to lift your hands, open your mouth and worship God for where he has you. For where he has you. Stay there. Stay right there. Stay right there. Stay right there. Stay right there. Can I give you this scripture? Proverbs 14 and 23. All hard work brings a profit. But mere talking leads only to poverty. If you're just talking, you ain't got nothing coming. But for those of you that have been getting up even when you didn't feel like getting up, serve when you didn't want to serve. Ooh, hear the word of the Lord. It's about to pay off. Okay, 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 you ready? Let's go, let's go. So you have this work ethic, you have this work ethic. Now there's something else that I wanna, I wanna encourage you. You gotta have a prayer life. Let's talk, and I'm not talking about a prayer life with a microphone. I'm talking about a secret prayer life. I'm talking about a prayer life, watch me, where you don't have anybody patting you on the back. A prayer life that you know that he's hearing you in your secret closet. I'm talking about the kind of prayer life that you ain't even got to talk loud. I'm talking about the kind of prayer life you ain't even got to say where you just go, oh, Jesus. <laughs> now, I need you to get this. Everybody, you got to get this. Are you ready? You got to get this. Are you ready? So, what do you mean a prayer life? The Bible said Elijah went up to him and did something natural, but that is really spiritual, and threw his cloak around his flesh, but I believe that it literally pulled on what was in his heart. Mm. See, I'm going to throw my cloak around your flesh, but it's going to shake what's been brewing on the inside of you. So what is his prayer like? Look at me. Have you ever thought while he's on the field working these oxen, have you ever thought while he's working the field, is it possible that he's praying to God, God, I'm grateful for what you've given me. But Lord, I just believe that you have more for me than this. While he's working, dealing with everything on there, is there part of him that's just walking saying, God, can you, can you give me a glimpse of my future? Is it possible that God let him see what no one else around him could see? Is it possible that God began to deal with him in a way that if it happened, look at me, it has to be God because you don't have these kind of connections. This don't match your resume. This don't match your background. Woo! And what God been dealing with some of you all about is bigger than your degree, bigger than your resume. Uh oh, here we go. I even rebuke your age. Mm. Oh my God. Because if he could call Moses at 80, he called Abraham at 75. What makes you think you too old to do what God has for you to do? Come on, let's talk. Come on, come on, lean in. Okay, calm down, John. Calm down. So what's he? What's he? So this thing is in here, and he's on the field. He's working the field. He's working, but he's working and praying. He's working, but he's working and praying. He's serving, but he's serving and praying. He's doing what he got to do, but he's praying at this time. Watch me. Watch me. Watch me. And I don't believe he's praying out loud, cause everybody can't handle what they hear you pray about. Come on, let's go. You better check your prayer partners. You can't pray with everybody. Watch me. So this is the scripture I want to give you. I want this scripture. Ready? In Proverbs 37 and 4. Take the light in the Lord. Take the light, look at me, in the Lord. Why are you doing what you do? You can't do it and be miserable. 
While you're doing what you do, you can't do it and be mad. Every now and then, you got to take the light in the Lord. You got to thank God that he gave you what you already have. Please pay attention. Take the light in the Lord. Here's the line. Here's the line. Go back. Go back. Go back. Take the light in the Lord. Here it is. And he will give you, I want you to pay attention to this, the desires that are not on your lips, but it's in your heart. It's right here because everybody can handle it. Please look. Look at the screen. I'm going to show you the same scripture in the Amplified. You ready? Bring it up. He says, delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you, watch this, the desires of your heart. Here's a line. And the secret, the secret, the stuff that if you say it, you're going to sound crazy. The stuff that if you say it, people are going to think you've lost your mind because you should be satisfied with what you already have. Watch me. It is the secret petitions of your heart. So I believe that while he's out there, he's holding something. Watch me. You know what the Lord showed me? I need you to be careful with who you share your secrets with. Because everybody can't handle your secret. Can we talk for a minute? Remember when Joseph had a dream? What did he do? He started running his mouth. And he ran to his brothers. And some of y'all, you got to hear me, even your family can't handle your future. Come on here. And the Bible said when he told it to his brothers, they hated him. The Bible said that when he told it to, they had another dream. And when he told it to his brothers, watch this. The Bible said, and they hated him the more. Which means that some things you got to keep in your heart. This is why when I come to church, I am very careful with who I sit next to. Because the last thing I need to be around is some non-dreamers. I need to be around somebody that we sit on the edge of our seat and we believe in that God for some crazy stuff. I just need you to make sure you sit next to the right person. You need a co-signer every now and then. Look at me. Look at me. <laughs> I just need you to make sure you got somebody that believe God. Watch me. Not just for no car. Ain't nobody talking about no darn car. Not for your light bill. I'm talking about money would never be your issue. I'm talking about the point that your name is about to be taken international. I'm talking about to the point that he's about to exceed your expectation. Please make sure you got somebody that believe God for crazy stuff. Shake three hands and say, I believe God. The secret stuff. The secret stuff. The stuff that don't make no sense. The stuff that goes beyond your degree. The stuff that goes beyond your denomination. The stuff that goes beyond your address. Your zip code. You're about to leave this country. You're about to be international. He's about to blow your mind. Release a praise right here. Go, go, go. Yay. Shayanda Babosiando. I believe God. I believe God. Everybody close your eyes. If you got a secret petition in your heart, open your mouth and begin to pray and believe God. I believe you for the impossible. I believe you for the intangible. I believe you for what don't match my degree. I believe you for what's outside my reach. I believe you for what you're gonna do for me. I believe you for where I'm going. I believe you for every door that you're gonna open. I believe you for every person you're gonna connect me with. I gotta make sure you're not hiding behind music. Lift your hands and worship God for your secret petition. Cut the music. Cut the music. Yay! Yay! Come on, open your mouth. I believe God. Come on, online.
I need you to type that on the screen. I believe God. If you know that it's bigger than your zip code, if you know that it's bigger than your address, if you know that it's bigger than where you are right now, give me 10 more seconds of you opening your mouth. Come on, just five more seconds. Five, four, three, and I must say, shake it. Rosoto me shake and it shall come to pass. And your labor has not been in vain. Your prayer life has not been in vain. Your shouting has not been in vain. Your serving has not been in vain. Come on here. Come on here. Come on here. Your sowing has not been in vain. You've been good to everybody. It's about to be your turn. It's about to be your turn. Give me five more seconds. No music. No music music, only your worship and your prayer going up before God. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Your turn, your turn. Your turn, your turn. You prayed for everybody else. You've been there for everybody else. You did it free. God's about to reward you openly. Yay! 10 more seconds for everybody that's been working and praying. Just 10 more seconds for everybody that's been working and believing. This is spiritual right here. Go, go. Ready? 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 Around the world. You're not here by chance or by accident. If you're online, please do me a favor. Worship God for every lesson you've learned in while working and serving. Worship God, worship God, worship God for the prayer, for what he put in you, 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 for what he been put in you. It's getting ready to happen. Is getting ready to happen. You waited for years, and it's about to happen this year. Yeah, my, 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 Ready? On your way to your seat, I need these words to come out of your mouth. I'm about to meet my connection. Because there's partnership with purpose. <laughs> there's partnership with purpose. You don't have to kick any doors down. You don't have to dog anybody out. You don't have to backstab. You don't have to do 20 jumping jacks. You don't have to be, no. What God has for you. Mm, there's about to be a click a connection in the spirit. You ready? Come on, we almost done. Have a seat. In the 20th verse, when he did this, Elisha then left his oxen and ran after his connection. Mm. Mm. Let me go on back and say bye to what's familiar. Let me kiss my father and my mother goodbye because they have done all they can do for me. But my next is outside my house. Mm, mm. Come on, come on, come on. He says, now after I've done that, I'm going to connect with you and then I will come to, I will come with you. You got to hear this. I start looking at this. Where did Elisha's name come from? Who referred him? Who saw his post? How many friends did he have? 
on Instagram or Facebook. Where did he come from? Look at me. I have this thing, Bishop, where I keep telling my people, I'm going to need you, if you have a work ethic and a prayer life, I need you to release your name in the atmosphere. Come on, lean in, lean in, lean in. Because some of y'all are like, I just don't know anybody good. I don't know anyone in that area. Excellent. Because when it happened, you're going to know that this was nobody but God. Wait, wait. So where did, where did his name come from? Remember when Elijah said, God, I quit. I quit. God brought his name up. Say, I've already found who's next. While he was in the back of the field working, God was monitoring his work ethic. God was listening to his prayer. And now it's his turn. So Elijah's sitting there talking and saying, and God brings him David. Now I'm going to need you to go by Zarephath. And I got somebody that no one knows. But I'm about to move him from the back to the front. I am troubled by some of y'all because you keep trying to take pictures, trying to get everybody to see you, trying to out, but you're not. Stop! Do you! Just keep working at what you're working at. Keep praying the way you're praying. Keep shouting the way you're shouting. Keep. And God brings his name up. It tells him, look at me, where to go find him. But I've never met him before. You don't have to know him. I know him. Ready? He's about to bring your name up. Watch me. Look at me. Look at me. And he's not going to bring your name up with people who don't have the oil to go with your destiny. Why bring my name up with people who can't take me where I'm trying to go? <laughs> There's no need in it. Watch me. If you gossiping about me, that's not, the, that's, that's, that's not my thing. Watch me. If you hating on me, that's not it. That's not it. But I'm looking for somebody that God put my name in your spirit. And at the right time, you got to regurgitate my name. But you can't bring my name up if your name is not in the atmosphere. Get out my say. So some of y'all don't believe in this. I'm good. I got you. So you don't believe in this? Come on, let's talk. So I get invited to Abuja. And I teach my church, release your name. Put your name out there. I believe that God will take your name and take it to where it's supposed to be and put it in the spirit of the right person. And they'll bring it up. So I end up flying to Abuja and I get there and I meet with a pastor. And he says, Can I, um, the pastor would like to come to your room. I said, okay. He comes in the room, he says, Pastor Hannah, I just wanted to see what you look like. I said, you want to see what I look like? Here I go, west side, Chicago. Bruh, you don't know me? He says, I've never met you before, a day in my life. He says, and I almost went on YouTube to look you up, but the Holy Ghost told me no. I say, bruh. How did you get my name? He said, I was in prayer. And all I kept hearing was John Hannah. John Hannah. I called someone in the United States and asked them if they knew who you were. And they said, yes, he lives in Chicago. Touch her neighbor and say, shut up. That's what you're going to say when they call your phone. <laughs> Shut up talking to me. Look at, wait, 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 wait. Hey, Bishop. So they end up calling to Chicago to another African who used to live across the street from me, who years ago used to come to my house and say to me, you need to be in Africa. You need to go to Africa. God's going to open the door for you to go. What am I trying to say? God has allowed some people to see your secret petition. 
without you opening your mouth. But this is the year, oh, y'all not ready for me today, that it's about to be a record-breaking year. Watch me. That you're about to meet your divine connection. Come on here. Open your mouth. Say, I'm about to meet my divine connection. See, Joshua couldn't be Joshua unless he connected with Moses. Ruth could not be who she was unless she connected with Naomi. Peter couldn't be who he was unless he connected with Jesus. Timothy couldn't be who he was unless he connected with Paul. Watch me. When Mary, when God told Mary, I need you to go find Elizabeth, the Bible said when she heard her voice, something started leaping I came to tell you there's about to be a leap in your dream there's about to be a leap in your resume there's about to be a leap wait 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 say my name say my name I know you're an intercessor. I know you're used to praying for everybody else. But the Lord told me you could be selfish tonight. I only want to hear your name. That I'm about to take your name into the atmosphere. I'm about to release it in the office. I'm about to make your phone ring. On the count of three, say your name and put a praise behind your name. One, two, three. John Hannah. Come on, your praise. Push it. Click, 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 one phone call, go change your whole life, one opportunity is about to shift you, come on, click, say your name again, John Hannah, say it again, John Hannah, say it again, John Hannah, John Hannah, John Hannah, John Hannah, John Hannah, bigger than your zip code, bigger than your city, bigger than your denomination, bigger than your business, bigger than your church, bigger than your family. I just saw an angel do this. I just saw heaven. He's about to turn your no into a yes. He's about to turn your no into a yes. Be not weary and well doing. It's your due season. It's your due season. Ready? Everybody get up. Can you find another praiser next to you? Can you make sure you got somebody that can praise God with you? Come on online, release some praise. Come on you two, this is God. You've been working and praying. You've been praying and working. You've been working and praying. You've been praying and working. It's about to be your season. <laughs> Ready? Ready? All you need is one opportunity. All you need is one phone call. All you need is one door to open. And when that door open, you about to go for broke. He's about to give you the opportunity of a lifetime. All I need is one chance. All I need is one chance. All I need is one chance. And the Lord say, and I can trust you with it. You've been working. You've been praying. You've been praying and you've been working. You've been working, coming to church. You've been serving. You've been smiling when you wanted to cry. You've been giving when you didn't have it to give. You've been praising when you didn't feel like praising. You've been leading worship when you needed to be led in worship. Everybody that know that this is God talking to you, release a praise again right here. Connect, 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 connect. Wow. Wow. 
it's about to pay off it's about to pay off we be made do for a night your night season is over it's your daybreak time he's about to prepare a table for you ready ready are you ready if you're not ready don't play with me if you content stay right there but if you're ready to get everything that's on the secret petition that thing that make you go whom jesus oh god i trust you lord i give you glory i magnify your name i believe that you're able to do anything i come to you because you're my jehovah jireh you're my provider you're the sovereign god you sit on the throne you reign you never sleep nor slumber you never take a break you know me from the inside out you know me from the inside out you know me from the inside out man look at the outward appearance but god you see my tears you see my hurt you see my pain you see my travail you hear me god and i give you glory Yeah, I know. When I prayed in tongues, this was my intercession. You ready? Everybody saying, you ready? You ready? So what am I doing here? So what am I doing here? Why did God bring me before we end the first quarter of the year? You got to pay attention to timing because what he set in motion in the first quarter has to be carried out for the rest of the year. So why does he have me in here? So I called Bishop. And I said, I can't explain it. But the Lord told me that you have the next oil. So Elisha, verse 21. Because there's a leading and a pouring. So Elijah left him and went back. Took his yoke of oxen and slaughtered them. And he burned the plowing equipment and cooked the meat and gave it to the people. And they ate his line. And then he followed the oil. So what you're going to do, that's what the people that do. Very few have the oil to do it. It's a lot of preachers. It's just that it's not that many anointed preachers. It's a lot of singers, and they can preach, and they can sing, and some of y'all can do what you do because you know how to do it. It's almost like when, he's, when Samson said, when the lot of colors set up, he said, I'll just go out and shake myself as I did before. Bible, he knew not that the Lord had departed. You shake him, but you don't have any power. You're working, but there are no miracle signs and wonders. What's going to separate us? What's going to separate you from anybody else that do what you do? He's about to put the super on your natural. (laughs) See, when you speak, you're going to fill a room up. He going to give you ideas that even no one else had. He going to give you the answer that, watch me, and those in the room could have gotten the answer, but they don't have the oil for the answer. You got to see this. First time I really paid attention. Bring it up in 1 Kings 19, 15. And this is when Elijah is about to leave and God said, go back your way. 
the way you came, and go to the desert of Damascus. When you get there, take your oil out. Take your oil out, because I want to anoint Haziel as king over Aram. Also take your oil out for Jehu, who's going to be king over Israel. So now those two are going to be king, but then there's another kind of oil. He doesn't need a king's oil. He needs the oil that's on your life. Because you're a prophet, he's going to be it. But he can't be it until you release the oil. Question, who released the oil on you? Or are you running oil less? <laughs> Some of us are just too full of pride that you won't humble yourself and ask somebody to pray over you. Hear me, Potter's house. You would be crazy to let people fly from all over the world to get what you get every week. You mean to tell me you sitting up under all of this oil? And it hasn't gotten on you. But maybe I need to check my work ethic. Or maybe I need to check my prayer life. Or maybe I need to check who I'm connected to.